What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Anthony McLemore and it's been quite a while since I posted a video as I tend to do on this channel a lot as this channel is purely just a hobby for me and I like to do it just because I have fun creating videos sometimes. But I thought because I had some pretty big changes in my life recently that it would be good to update you guys on what's been going on but specifically because this is a finance related channel, how I turned my first home into a rental property. Now this is a situation that I know a lot of people may be able to relate to because sometimes when you buy a house you don't necessarily want to sell the house because of the money that you have into it whether the market is appraising it high or not and it may be a more realistic option to turn that house into a rental property rather than selling it to someone else so this video I plan to break down the steps that I took to turn my first house into a rental property this is by no means the end all be all video on how to do it I was learning a lot myself as I was going through the process as far as property management goes cleaning expenses LLC expenses the whole nine yards so this video is a breakdown from a beginner to a beginner so that if you want to consider turning your live in house into a rental property then this may be a good guide for you to follow but first thing first I do want to make a personal addressment that this is a new studio from what you guys usually see I try to set it up as similar as possible to my previous studios but this happens to be the fourth house into which I recorded YouTube videos out of if you go back to the very beginning of this channel I was posting YouTube videos out of me and my girlfriend at the times first apartment then we moved into our first house that we rented together and that's when we got married and, and that was my first official looking YouTube studio and then we bought a house and my YouTube studio changed a little bit since then but now we're in a completely new house and a completely new studio and this one happens to be a full bedroom so I'm no longer recording out of a closet in the basement and I actually have a window with some sunlight coming in so that's always great for vitamin C and productivity however let's get back into the meat and potatoes of the video and let's talk about why you want to decide to rent out your first home or just sell it in the first place well there can be a couple of different reasons on why why you decide to rent your house out or why you want to sell it but here are the reasons why I decide to go for the landlord route rather than selling it on the market and one of the first and most important reasons to me was interest rates when we bought our house in the state of Alabama we got a mortgage rate of 2.75 percent for 30 years right now the current mortgage rates are hovering anywhere between 6.5 percent and 7 percent for 30 years so me being the financially oriented person myself I didn't really feel comfortable giving up that golden goose of an interest rate just to have a little bit more cash in my pocket in my eyes locking in a 2.75 percent interest rate when the inflation rate is a little bit over three percent it's like having the bank pay you to borrow money now i don't want any dave ramsey supporters jumping down my throat because i do plan on paying this mortgage off but i thought that in the meantime while the interest rate is so cheap and the payment is so much less than it would be at a higher interest rate this would be the perfect time to turn this property into a cash flowing property so that i could continue to reap the benefits from the low interest rates that we got and then the next thing that you want to think about is whether or not you want to become a landlord and this particular question is what stumps a lot of people from actually renting their property out they don't want to deal with the headaches of changing light bulbs and fixing toilets and being caught in the middle of the night because there have been so many horror stories of landlords floating around that it makes it seem to the everyday person that is not a venture that they want to pursue but i have personally been considering getting into real estate for a very long time so i know that those stories can happen and they often do happen but with a healthy property management system you can avoid a lot of those headaches if you take the necessary precautions up front rather than trying to fix the headaches once they occur and i'm going to get to those necessary precautions in a second but the third reason why people may decide to turn their house into a rental property is the actual benefits of turning your house into a rental property and those benefits come in four main areas if you read any real estate book or any rental property investing book then you probably know these already but the first benefit of turning your house into a rental property is that you get to capitalize on the appreciation that your home sees as it continues to rise in value real estate is one of the most consistently appreciated assets in the United States over the last 30 or 40 years. Now don't quote me on that because I don't know the exact percentage, but I'm almost certain that the value of real estate and the value of rental properties has appreciated greater than the value of the stock market over the last 10 to 20 years. And when you decide to sell your house rather than rent your house out, you are cutting off the arm of that appreciation and you're just getting a check, but no future cash flow or no future appreciation comes to you from that property. And appreciation for those that don't know is the rise in value of your house over time. So when you bought your house in May, 
have been worth $250,000. However, in 10 years, when you get it reappraised, it may be $300,000 or $350,000. But the second benefit of turning your house into a rental property is the loan pay down that your tenants provide to you. So I know that this particular benefit can be a little different for most people, but for most rental property investors, once they get a mortgage on their property and they put a tenant in that property, they would then use the tenant's rent in order to pay down the mortgage on the property. And by doing that, not only is the house appreciating the value, but over time they are owing less on the loan on the house. So the equity that the investor that you or me in this case would have will continue to increase over time. The longer you hold a property, the bigger check you would get at the end of the day once you pay off your mortgage balance. However, the third benefit of turning your home into a rental property would be the tax advantages that you get. Now this scenario is definitely different for a lot of people. So if you don't take the standard deduction, then you can actually write off a lot of the interest payments that you pay on your mortgage to owe a little bit less in taxes. Now I am not an accountant by any means. So if you want some professional advice on this topic, then I'll definitely suggest you go talk to one. But let me get right into the fourth benefit for turning your first house or any house into a rental property. And that is going to be the actual cash flow that you receive. So the cash flow is going to be any income that you receive on that house minus the mortgage minus saving for maintenance, capex, vacancy and repairs. And that is going to be basically the pure and unfiltered profits that you get from renting your house out. And to some people, those four benefits don't outweigh the headache of becoming a landlord. But to me, I found that to be a heavily favorable scenario. So that's why I decided to jump into being a landlord. And then once you make the decision to actually rent your property out, you have a few things that you now want to consider. And one of the main things that you want to consider is property management. Now to some people, they may want to rent their house out, but they don't want anything to do with the day-to-day -day activities of managing and rental properties. They don't want to hear from their tenants. They don't want to be called when the toilet breaks or when the light bulb goes out. And for these types of people is, is where property management companies come in. Property management companies are basically just a business that provides a service to allow them to find tenants for you, to allow them to manage the property on a day-to-day -day basis. And in exchange, they tend to take about eight to 10% of your monthly rent as a service fee. And for a $1,500 rent house, it would be about $150 a month. Now you can still definitely have positive cash flow with a property management company. However, if you are like me and this is your only house, then you may want to go with the self-management route. And I do want to warn you that if you go with the self-management route, you really want to read up on the laws and regulations of your area. You want to know what a good lease looks like. You want to know how to find good tenants and you overall want to educate yourself on how to structure this rental property as a business so you don't get your personal emotions attached to it. And I think one of the best ways to learn about this is reading the book called The Book on Rental Property Investments by Brandon Turner, who is a part of the Bigger Pockets community. And through this book, I was able to learn a lot about managing rental properties. And as I did a little bit more research, I found a website called avail.co that I now use to manage this rental property. And avail.co, although this is not a sponsored video, has proven to be a great resource for me because it allowed me to list my property on all the major exchanges except for Zillow. It allowed me to screen tenants, do background checks, do credit score checks. It allowed me to set up a lease specific to the state of Alabama, as well as sign a lease, upload important documents, and also most importantly, keep track of expenses and maintenance requests so that this rental property has a very solid foundation of books when it comes to tax time. Now, I may go a little bit deeper into the avail.co software in a separate video. However, for those interested, I do recommend it as it has proven to be a great resource for me. And the kicker is it only costs $7 a month for each property that you have. So if you have 10 properties, it will be $70 a month. But just for me with my one property, it is only $7 a month. And now that you decided whether or not you're going to manage the property yourself, the next thing that you probably want to do is set up an LLC around your rental property so that you can limit most liability circumstances and that you sort of insulate your personal assets from your business assets. I plan to do an entire video on how to set up an LLC for a rental property. So if you want to be notified when that video actually posts on this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you can be notified whenever a video posts. But moving on to the next step of turning your first home into a rental property is actually going to be the preparation for the listing. So before the actual listing itself, you really want to make sure your property is empty and especially clean because people's first impression of your property is going to be, am I going to be living in someone else's filth? Am I going to be using a pre-owned shower with a lot of gunk and dirt on it? And will I have to worry about my personal health if I rent this property out? That's why I think it is so important to have your home professionally clean from top to bottom and emptied of any old furniture before you list your house. Because when someone walks into your house, they want to feel like they can live in that house right away. And for me personally, I found a cleaner through an app called Thumbtack that charged $450 for eight hours of cleaning. And that service cleaned the house top to bottom, spotless, tubs, kitchen, living room, bedrooms, 
everything from top to bottom for $450, which I found for the amount of work that was required for that house was a very fair deal. And I would definitely consider paying for that service again, rather than doing the work myself. And although I do consider myself a fairly cheap person in general, I weighed the pros and cons of paying someone to clean the house rather than cleaning for myself. I figured that it would take me at least two to five days to get the house as clean as that person did, whereas they were able to come in and clean it all within one day. And by preparing the house for listing, you can then go straight into listing a house, which I did through avail.co, which was so convenient because I was able to upload one listing on avail.co and it then posted it to 10 or 15 of the major rental property platforms. It posted it to realtor, apartments.com, the avail.co dashboard itself. The only thing that it didn't post the listing to was Zillow, which is probably one of the most popular rental property platforms. However, that wasn't hard for me to overcome as I simply just went and uploaded a listing on Zillow itself. And also resourceful enough, the avail.co platform actually gives you the option to have a rent analysis done on your property so that you can see what the fair market value of your house would be. That way you don't end up charging too much or too little for your property and you're able to gauge just where the sweet spot is of where you should list your house to get the most income possible without driving away potential tenants. And after you list the house or after I listed my house, my next step was to screen tenants. But And because the house I chose to rent was recently renovated, it got a lot of attention from the younger, more modern looking crowd. And I had a lot of applicants to search through for the first day. So three of my main criteria when screening tenants was first that they had to have at least a 620 credit score. They couldn't have more than two late payments within the last 12 months on any of their auto loans, student loans, or personal loans or credit cards. And also they had to have a clean eviction or criminal record. Now the criminal record is something that I would have bypassed given the opportunity that I can't necessarily discriminate, but the other three criteria were pretty firm when I was looking for a prospective tenant to rent the house out to. And then once you find the tenants that you choose to approve, I then set up a lease through the avail.co app, which was signed by both co-tenants that chose to inhabit my property. And after that, you then go through the process of signing it yourself. And now you have a new tenant and a new rental property that you are managing on your own. So if you want to see the full breakdown of the cost involved in this property, then leave a comment down below as I do want to make a full video about that, but I'm not sure how interested people are in seeing the numbers. I'm a person that's interested in the actual numbers of things. So if you do just leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to make that video on this channel. However, with all that being said, I'm I'm really happy to be back posting on this channel. So as I said, this channel is really a hobby for me and I do wanna make sure I am more consistent here on the channel because I have a lot of fun doing it. But sometimes when things I feel are more important getting in the way of posting on the channel, I tend to put it off, which I would try very hard not to do in the future. So if you like this kind of content and you wanna see more content like this, then make sure to hit that subscribe button for your boy. Hit that like button as it really does help the channel out in the YouTube algorithm and I'll see you in the next time, guys. Maybe a little sooner than six to eight months from now. Peace.